it's likely that you have carried out this experiment. If you haven't, then you may do it now along with us. We take a safety razor blade and put it carefully onto the water surface. The blade is floating, even though the steel it's made of is eight times denser than water. We can do the same experiment with a needle. For it to lie smoothly on the surface, we put it on a floating piece of blotting paper. We carefully sink the paper and the needle continues to stay on the surface. But take a closer look. The water near the needle has caved in. It is in the same way that water caves in around the tarsi of water striders that can run along water surfaces on their four thin legs perfectly well and do not drown. A razor blade, a needle and a water strider are kept up on the water surface and don't sink or drown because of water surface tension. Water surface behaves as if it were covered with an elastic coating. When we put a needle onto the surface, it caves this coating in and stretches it. Now surface tension forces possess an upward component which balances up the needle's weight. Let's try to figure out why a water strider can stride along water while a human can't. The thing is that when the size of a body gets ten times smaller, the length of the line along which the body is watered gets ten times shorter, whereas its volume and weight decrease one thousandfold instead of tenfold. Therefore, surface tension force manifestation is small scale only. It is negligible for a human, comparable to its weight for a water strider, but the life of microbes is determined by surface forces, while gravity force turns out to be negligible for them. The phenomenon of surface tension accounts for the fact that castles made of damp sand hold shape and sand mixed with water is fluid. Due to this fluidity, one can build high towers that look like spires of medieval cathedrals. Damp sand contains little water. This water forms bridges between the sand grains. Each bridge is quite weak, but sand grains are tiny, and therefore the number of bridges is huge. So, surface tension force turns out to be considerable. Let's carry out another experiment. We cover a jar's neck with a fine mesh and pour some water into the jar through the mesh. It runs in effortlessly. Now we cover the jar with a hand and turn it upside down. The mesh prevents the water from running out of the jar. Is this due to surface tension alone or should we take into account other physical effects to explain this experiment? Share your ideas on this in comments in VK and on YouTube.